Hello everyone, it's Elliot here. I hope you're all doing very well indeed. Today I want to touch upon a new story that has come out over the weekend regarding boutique Blu-rays, in particular Criterion. So it turns out that their new release for A Hard Day's Night, the Beatles film, on 4K Blu-ray apparently has some issues. Now I'd like to say that this is a surprise, but to be honest, given the track record of a lot of Blu-ray labels during the last two years or so, their quality assurance has not been good at all. There have been so many disc recalls and disc replacement programs. Uh, Criterion have even had this themselves over the past few months. I'm sure that you'll remember the Citizen Kane 4K Blu-ray set from Criterion had some issues and it had to be recalled and disc replacements are in the process right now. Now that release should have been spotless because this is a phenomenal time for Criterion. They're getting Citizen Kane back in the collection and this was one of their very first 4K Blu-ray releases. So they should have made sure that this was absolutely flawless but it turns out some things fell through the cracks and we are where we are today. Fast forward to this past weekend where it turns out there are issues with the A Hard Day's Night 4K release as well. So that means out of the first five 4K releases, Criterion have dropped the ball with two of them. Now that is not a great success rate in my books. A lot of people call me a Criterion fanboy and I'll admit I do love Criterion and the Criterion collection. This sort of stuff has to be called out because it needs to stop. With the Citizen Kane debacle the issue was with the Blu-ray disc not the actual 4K Blu-ray disc. Now I'm not playing that down, that is still awful to have happened. Uh, but here with the Beatles film, the issue is actually with the 4K disc. So this is actually a big deal, perhaps even a bigger deal than with Citizen Kane. I don't actually have the disc myself, so I haven't even had a chance to look through it. But I believe the issue is, and this sounds really strange, certain sequences in the film have other parts of the film spliced in there as if they've been edited in there by someone. It, it sounds very bizarre because this isn't actually a picture quality issue or an audio quality issue. The actual film itself has been messed up somehow and I, I don't know how that happens but it has. Typically these Blu-ray companies have at least one person checking the content before it actually goes out to be printed to disc. Now here is a special situation because technically someone who is very proficient at checking for audio and video quality issues would totally have missed this if they're not familiar with the film or the actual editing rhythm of the film itself. It calls into question the actual QA process of Criterion and these other labels. You'd think that they would have run an existing version of the movie, perhaps from their older Blu-ray disc, alongside this new 4K version, just to check that it completely matches up. It appears that that hasn't been done here. So, I feel like someone has dropped the ball somewhere or perhaps this just wasn't in their QA process at all. I know it seems like I'm picking on Criterion here, honestly I'm not because other labels have had this problem. Uh, Arrow Video had to do multiple disc replacement programs last year and even bigger labels, bigger studios have to do disc recalls. So it's not just Criterion, it seems like it's an industry thing where not enough checks are being done on these discs. This leads me on to the greater issue here that could really jeopardize the future of this physical media format and obviously I would hate for that to happen and hopefully you would too. You have to question why is this happening more than it did happen with previous formats like Blu-ray and DVD. And it seems to me, and this is pure speculation, I have nothing to go on, but it makes sense to me, is that these companies are rushing out these releases because 4K, there's a buzz around 4K, people want new 4K releases as fast as possible. 
And it seems like that is the best way to make money and keep the ball rolling for these companies. Because they're not daft, they see the future that eventually physical media is going to start dwindling. We've seen that over the past few years. And it isn't clear what the future of discs and the 4K format in particular is. You may think that I'm being all doom and gloom about this, but I'm just being practical. I'm looking at how this could affect the future of our hobby and interest. Now, the thing is, if they are doing these disc replacement programs, disc recalls, this is a very expensive process for these companies. And if these companies are already suffering to you know, make profits and keep going, this is really going to affect them. And in the end, it's going to affect us as the consumer. If you look at the initial titles that Criterion are releasing on 4K, they've obviously selected them because they know that these ones will make a decent amount of money. People are going to want to buy Mulholland Drive, Citizen Kane, A Hard Day's Night on 4K Blu-ray because they are popular titles in the collection. But when something like this happens, that totally changes things. And it could mean that this particular release won't be profitable for years and years to come. The reason is that they have to recall the discs that are already on shelves now. They have to print new discs. And I imagine they're printing tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. And then they have to ship these discs back and they have to get the packaging open and reprint packaging. And uh, there's just so much that they have to do. And they've already said, I believe that they're going to be replacing these discs now and they'll be coming out by March. So March is when you can actually get your hands on it now. Um, but yeah, it's just a whole expensive thing that they don't need. And eventually that cost is going to be passed on to us in some way or another. I'm not suggesting that Criterion are going to up their prices for their releases, but this could mean that the money they're spending on this replacement program is money taken away from funding some other release, perhaps of another release of a film that wouldn't generate a lot of sales anyway. Because I believe that Criterion's business model is they have certain releases that make tons of money and that can then fund the other releases that are essentially lost leaders that are never going to make money to cover costs. So to me, as a film lover, that is the real shame because those smaller hidden gem films in the Criterion Collection are the ones that I look forward to the most because that is where I learn more about different films and I discover new filmmakers. And if this kind of situation is jeopardizing that, that is a real shame. So what can be done about all this? I would just say to these labels, if you're watching, just hire one or two more people to check these releases because it's going to be much cheaper for you in the long run than if you keep messing up and having to replace discs. Like you could even hire someone who's not part of the company, just freelance, just to watch the film five times, ten times, just to make sure it looks and sounds good. Before I conclude this video rant, I'll just mention one more thing, and that is that certain reviewers online have already given glowing reviews to this disc. Now, if you go on blu-ray.com, for example, the review on there is five stars pretty much across the board and no mention of this issue. Now, I'm not picking on that review in particular because I'm saying that they should have noticed it because, hell, I don't even know if I would have noticed it myself. My point is that any reviewer, whether it's the reviewer for blu-ray.com or whether it's digital bits or YouTubers such as myself or Jeff from Films at Home, we're all human. So we're all going to make mistakes. We're not going to pick up on everything. I never claim that I, <laughs> I pick up every issue with a disc, but I know there are people out there who put so much more stock in the reviews on these bigger websites. I've seen people on Facebook mention that they won't pay any attention to YouTube reviews at all because they think we're some kind of idiots who can't have an opinion on these things. I would just say this is an example of how people can get it wrong and how it's all subjective. 
and you should take in different reviews from all sorts of different places and then come up with your own decision on if you're going to buy something or not. Anyway, that was so much more long-winded than I thought it would be, so I will let you go. I do hope you found it interesting though, perhaps you found it informative if you hadn't already heard the news. But yeah, it's food for thought because this could really impact this whole industry and hobby that we have. Thank you so much for watching and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please do hit subscribe because that would really help me out and put a smile on my face. So yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, I'll let you go. So stay well and keep watching great films.